In this video, I'll give my impressions of my GMAX 1.5 XT Plus printer. I've used it for a few months. I've only made PLA models and haven't used the heated build plate yet. So my impressions will be built on what I've used it for to date. I like it and I've made some really nice models from it such as this model which I downloaded from Thingiverse and then edited to make a phone stand. Once I got the settings figured out it printed beautifully and I have a lot of people who want me to print one just like it. I printed this phone stand also and you can see it does very well with the pointed features. So that makes a good phone stand also. And it does well with text. I made a bunch of key fobs with text to try out the little details and I experimented with settings on them. The ones on the left I painted. Here on this fridge magnet, I think I finally got the settings dialed in. And I'm doing pretty good with embossed cookie cutters also. The dual extruders work real well. I use Simplify 3D's Dual Extrusion Wizard, and this prints two colors like a champ. Adjusting the extruders so that their level isn't too bad, you open up the LED shroud and loosen the screws and then pivot the extruders until they're level. That said, there was a lot for me to learn on using this. I'm used to a MakerBot Rep 2 which is as plug and play as you're going to get, I think, with a printer. The white one was made with MakerBot desktop defaults right out of the box. The cube on the right was made with the GMAX out of the box. It took a lot of experimentation to figure out how to get it right. Now, GCreate on its website says that its printers are for intermediate users. I don't know what that means. I considered myself intermediate because of my MakerBot experience, but I don't think that's what was meant. Going from a Core XY to a Prusa style printer is a large leap. And there were a lot of things that I didn't know, and it was kind of assumed that I'd know. For example, many of the bolts and belts had to be tightened. Maybe they came loose during shipping. And not all the bolts worked with the Allen wrenches that I was sent. So that was a bit of a challenge for me. The downloadable handbook they have is a work in progress. It's kind of skimpy in a lot of information. It assumes you know things that you might not know. Well, at least that I didn't know. For example, I didn't know that if you have a USB cord attached to the printer from the computer, the SD card won't work, and that took me a while to figure out, wondering why nothing happened when I picked a model out from the SD card. The menu also, I must say, is quite cumbersome. There's a lot of flipping through it you have to do to find what you need, and it times out in about seven seconds, so you can't think about anything too long. If you don't know how a BL touch works, then that's going to be another issue because that's not described in the guide. And it took me a long time to figure out that that build plate leveling is done the whole time the print is underway. Unlike the MakerBot where you do all your leveling first and then you start the print. So you need to know how the BL Touch works to get started. 
Now once you get that figured out, or at least once I got it figured out, I made a bunch of test cubes. And even with all the settings experimentation, I kept getting Z-banding. And as it turns out, I was getting most of that Z-banding due to a missing bushing. That white bushing there was not present when I was sent the machine. So I designed one with 123D and printed it on the MakerBot and it held up well enough and solved the Z-banding problem until I was sent a new set of bushings. I was also missing the hardware that attached the heated build plate to the printer. Once I let them know I was missing parts, they were very good at sending them out and the tech support is, is pretty good. Um, most questions get answered within one to three days. These are the spool holders. I'm not crazy about them. They only send three for a dual extruder and the filament sometimes gets tangled below. Also, the spools fall off very easily and you have to adjust them with two screws for each different size spool you have and you need a wrench for one of the for one of the adjustments so i find that kind of cumbersome a problem i did have was my fan shroud melted it's made of pla it's very close to the extruder and that bit of red you see there is melted filament onto the melted part a friend printed me up a pet G fan shroud from the STL files that G Create has on its site, and that worked out real well. The heated build plate is is difficult to work with. Now I use it instead of the acrylic one that they sent, but wire management is an issue. If you don't have the wires perfectly set up, they're going to interfere with the plate movement. And the plug-in for the plate is loose. It does not sit securely into the outlet, which I think is kind of a danger. This part of the build plate needs to be placed well, not to interfere with movement also. It seems to have a bit of a struggle holding a, a constant temperature and there's no on and off switch you turn it on and off by unplugging it if you're not present when the print is finished the plate will remain hot loading the extruder is not easy the little plastic tube that the filament goes through is kind of far from the drive wheels and getting that filament loaded can be a real challenge. It typically, for me, it typically takes using a screwdriver to push it in, and then you need a third hand to hold a flashlight. This is a particular issue if, if you need to change filament mid-print, such as cutting the filament for a tangle. There's a purge function for the left extruder, but not for the right extruder. So getting the last bit of filament through it is difficult, frankly. And if you move the extruder while you're trying to shove the filament in, of course you've ruined the whole print. That said, the extruders work well once you do get them loaded. I have not had a filament jam at all, which I'm quite pleased with. So overall, I'm fine with this printer. I look forward to using the heated build plate when I get to more exotic filaments.